the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Good evening, everyone. Today is Tuesday, April 9, 2024, the time being 6.30 p.m. The meeting of the Greensburg City Council is called to order at this time. Please silence electronic devices. To comply with Title VI of the Civil Rights Act of 1964, the city requests that participants in this meeting complete a voluntary anonymous survey that's available on the table in the back of the room. And you please call the roll. Yes, no, I'm not ready. Okay. Daryl Pulling. Here. Rodney King. Here. Kevin Fleetwood. Here. Jamie Kane. Here. Mark Carmen. Yes, here. Diana McKenzie. Here. Daryl Tressler. Here. Right. You all should have received a copy of the minutes from March 12th. If there are no edits or additions, those will stand approved as presented. Seeing none, we will move on. Amy, you have old business 24-05. This is the um, Cum Capital Development Fund that we've discussed um, for the re-establishment of the um, CCD rate of 2.5, 0 0.05, sorry. Nothing has changed on that. Any? Just second reading. Second reading. Make a motion we pass ordinance 2024-5 on the second reading. Second. Motion's been made by Jamie, seconded by Daryl. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Okay. I've got a quick update from uh, the Veritas group regarding our project out on my uh, laptop for some reason doesn't project over here on the other side. So we've got it behind Daryl. So the site overall, um, storm, structure, storm structures are in, final grading has started. If you've been out there recently, you've noticed that uh, the underbase for the Barris shell extension has been put in. Um, Chief Sturmer presented some information to the Board of Works about a shooty excavating under the purview of Meyer Nasham's contract will begin to encroach onto Broadway about three feet as they start to make the tie-ins for the acceleration, deacceleration lanes as a part of our construction project. That will take, uh, the estimate on that is three weeks once the weather cooperates. So we will start to see that work happening. There is not any intention for a full lane closure um, as Broadway is obviously a major thoroughfare, but uh, you can also see some of the other curbs uh, and items happening there. On the fire station side, the front apron's been poured, the back apron has been poured as well. Fiber cement board is starting to go up. That's sort of the final piece of the exterior that they're working on. In the next photo, you'll be able to see where um, drywall ceilings, walls, and paint have begun. Uh, HVAC equipment was set on the roof uh, last week or week before, and uh, duct work continues to be installed in the apparatus bay and in some of the more mechanical type spaces. The two items that are on our radar of issue with the schedules, the generator, that's been on there for a while. Um, we will get a temporary gener generator if we can move into the building uh, before that one arrives. And then the four garage doors that are on the front of the building are having a little bit of insulation availability by the manufacturer. Uh, the four on the back of the building are more readily available. Chief, anything else on your project there? Okay. Um, interior of the front uh, hallway, this is where administration is. There is on the left. And then on the right is on the second floor. That's the like day room slash living room, uh, dining room and kitchen. As you move back into the right where the windows are, that would be the kitchen on the second story. Um, so you can see paints going up, drywalls in, lights, etc. We'll talk about schedule in just a minute. On the street department side, um, we've got paint in, floorings installed in certain places. The administration space is coming along really nicely. Um, restrooms are being put together. And then on the other, other side, out in the workspaces, concrete's being finished, polished, uh, sealed, those kinds of items. 
tomorrow afternoon is the tomorrow morning is the punch list uh, walkthrough with the contractor on the interior side. As you can see, the, the exterior has a little bit of site work to go. Um, two different contractors are, are handling that. So the punch list will be for the building um, only. It's a very high level. We've got a lot of uh, work to still be done, but you can see here where uh, this is the main hallway. That door at the very back on the left is the public entrance. So if uh, the public were to go visit the street department, they would come into this space. Um, and then the photo on the right is the mechanics space, uh, mezzanine part storage up above the administrative space there. Any questions on this one? Mark, did I miss anything? Perfect. Um, I want to be sure that we emphasize the difference in these as we go forward. Our base project, the original project, has not changed. The budget has not changed. The, the revised GMP is for those projects that we've added over the last uh, two months with our interest earnings on the project. So that is what's changed the GMP. It's not something that was done in the original project. This is um, what's been added. Uh, late May is our uh, schedule still. Hopefully we can move in in June. I am. Uh, Go, I said in the Board of Works, going out on a little bit of limb. The idea, I know people are excited to see the, the properties, see what they look like, uh, and get in them. Hopefully, we will have open houses for them before the fair. That's the goal. Um, that's, the, that's the target. So, uh, with that, any questions? I don't have a drone video this evening. They didn't get it uploaded, but any questions on that? Perfect. Sarah, you've got a couple items for us. The first is 2406 free zone. Good evening. Um, in your packet, you should have received ordinance number 2024-06 in regards to rezoning a piece of property. Um, this rezone is for um, Heritage Hill um, on Southeast <coughs> Street. Um, originally, when that was rezoned, um, it was rezoned to B2, which really it should have been rezoned a B1 to coincide with all the other properties, businesses around there, which are B1, which is the central business district. So um, this would just be rezoning the church, the education center, or the uh, school, and then the smaller building, which is the education center. The rectory is um, on a separate parcel and will remain in R2 until they decide um, maybe down the road what they're going to do with that. So um, this went before Planning Commission with a favorable recommendation. So tonight I'm just asking for approval of Ordinance 2024-06. Does anyone have any questions? I'll make a motion we pass 2024-06 on the first reading. Second. The, it's 218 South, right? Yeah. Two, what's the address? There's several different there's, addresses there's like for the five. buildings, and I have, so the um, the ordinance says 218. The yes. agenda says 208. So, yeah. The what says 208? I'm the, sorry. The agenda, like agenda says oh, 208, but the ordinance says 218. It's 218. Yeah. The ordinance has a correct. Okay. Uh, who made the motion? Jay. Yeah, okay. uh, came with favorable recommendation from the planning commission. Perfect. All those in favor of approval, signify by saying aye. Aye. Those opposed? Can we make a motion to suspend the rules? Second. Motion's been made to suspend the rules by Jamie. Okay. Second by Kevin. Second by Kevin. Amy's panicking. <laughs> All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? I, I make a motion that we pass 2024 06 on the second reading. Second. Motion's been made by Jamie, second by Kevin. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Thank you, sir. Okay. Thank you, Evan and Emily, for being here, and that was painless. Uh, we like that one. Perfect. Yes, Thank you. <laughs> Keep up the great work. It looks great. Yes. Okay. Uh, the second ordinance that you would receive was 2024-07. This is an ordinance amending um, the UDO of some edits. Um, a lot of the edits were, were just minor as far as, like, cross-referencing um, different things that had changed that they had missed a cross-reference, so they just cleaned that up. There were some more significant changes um, to the sign ordinance and to um, the definitions chapter and to the uh, land matrix. 
Um, I believe that we have covered um, all of that, made those adjustments. So um, just looking for your approval this evening. Um, that also went before the Planning Commission with a, a favorable recommendation. I'd like a motion to approve. Second. Motion has been made by Rodney, second by uh, Jamie. All those in favor, signing from saying aye. Aye. Those opposed? Can we suspend the rules? On, I'll make a motion we suspend the rules on 20. No. I get a little bit. Okay. I get we'll a little. Wait. I get a little bit more heartburning when you suspend we'll it something as big as the UBO. So. We'll wait. It can wait a month. So we're not. Okay. Nope. Gotta wait. One and done. See. I'll take see, it. See you next month. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> okay, Amy, you've got mm -hmm. Ordinance 24-08, which is Amendment 2403. Yes. <laughs> this is an, amend an amendment for the salary ordinance. This does not affect the budget, if you read my memo. Um, this is just, was an oversight. Um, there was a raise in the budget for those three positions. But it was not reflected in the hourly on the salary ordinance. So this does not affect the budget at all. We've been paying according to what we should, what we budgeted, or are we paying according to this? We have been paying according to the previous salary amend, uh, ordinance, so not this. So then there's going to be back pay that'll be due as part of this, right, right, right for the first three months? I'm just I don't have an answer as to how that is supposed to be done yet. Okay. I will be looking into that. Okay. Do you, do you want to authorize that if it's I, Yeah, I guess that is the good, that is the question. Well, I mean, I, guess, I think that's what we planned when we approved the budget last year, right, was that it was going to be at those rates. I think that was the assumption, so I hate for those um, those people that were doing those roles to have those assumptions, and then now they didn't get the money, and now it's April, and oh, sorry, you didn't get it for the first three months. I, I, I think it'd be appropriate, my, my opinion, and I'm one opinion, is that we would give them that back pay back to January 1st. Right? I concur with that. So we probably need to do two motions, or four, because we're good. Are you going to ask to suspend the rules on this? I, yes, I am, Okay. if we can. Then you're going to have a bunch of motions. But yes, yes. I would do them as but two motions. I would, I would do the entirety of passing the ordinance first, and then I would, file, I would <coughs> uh, entertain a separate motion to authorize the additional expenditure of back pay as it relates to the now then passed ordinance. I'll make a motion we pass ordinance 2024-08 Second. Motion's been made by Jamie, said by Kevin. Any other comments or thoughts on that? If not, all those in favor of passing the ordinance as amended, signify from saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Now I'll make a motion we suspend the rules on 2024-08. Second. Motion to suspend's been made by Jamie, second by Kevin. All those in favor, signify from saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Make a motion we pass 2024-08 on the second reading. Second. Motion's been made by Jamie, second by Kevin. All those in favor of second? Reading, signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Now I make a motion that we approve back pay for those three uh, three line items in the fire department, the assistant chief, the captain, and the lieutenant, to reflect what's in ordinance 2024-08, starting in January 1st of this year until current. Motion's been made uh, to authorize back pay by Jamie, seconded by Kevin. Those in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Those opposed? Does that, that's not in order. Is that, is that okay without a... Uh, yes, I think so, because all you're doing is authorizing. So you've already got budget <laughs> funds. Yes. They're it already covered. Yes. They're now covered by the ordinance. Yes. There's a, a description that goes along with it. And all you did was authorize her to do what she's probably going to end up doing anyway. Okay. Perfect. Um, We've had a request for uh, some comments by Mark Rizell. Mr. Rizell, if you'd please make your way up here. Um, Mr. Stevens is our timekeeper, as we talked about before the meeting, of about three minutes to share your thoughts. Um, a couple of points. Uh, public meetings are a privilege, not a right. So I appreciate you sending us your, uh, sending me your thoughts in advance. Um, I will attempt to respond to some of them after you complete all of your topics. Thank you very much. Thanks for having, allowing me to speak. Um, I have three items I would like to comment on. Um, 
been approached by some other people on this also. Number one is a door and its true path through or around Arbor Grove. I've been told the street from East Main underneath the arch to Central that runs on the east side of Arbor Grove is a private drive. So how are we going to get the door path across this street? <clears throat> Do we really need alcohol in a park with all the attached things that go along with its use to show our children? Why must we keep intruding on the elderly who have paid taxes in this community for over 60 years? First, we build an amphitheater to play loud music to the east of them. Then we build a youth soccer complex to the west, which is great for our community and our kids and not a burden to the residents or the staff, but is now turned into an event center with more loud music. Why are these things not placed at the park or at the fairgrounds where there was ample parking and disrupting everyday life would not have been a concern? Could have had a door there and no issues with that either. That's number one. Number two. Transparency on the funds that are spent by this community. Uh, specifically, the transparency of the funds used to pay for the Eclipse project. There were a lot of mailing sent out, a lot of additions to bills. Uh, what budget was this drawn from, and how much was spent on the project total? Did we have a budget for it? I feel more transparency is needed on a lot of projects happening in this city. Tax dollars spent and nothing to show. Number three, <clears throat> why did we need new welcome signs coming into town? How interesting they were installed just in time for the eclipse gathering. The old signage represented the community well through accomplishments of our youth. Seems like a lot of taxpayer dollars going to various signage projects around town that may not have been necessary. If I'm going to a location in a city, my Google Maps direct me. Not signs on Broadway near a new firehouse location, which are very confusing. I don't know if anyone's seen them or not, but if you're heading south on Broadway, look at that sign there. See if you know which direction you're really going to go. Tax money could be used to fund much more needed projects, in my opinion. Thank you all for your time. Um, Mr. Rizal, I, I do have some answers to some of your questions. Um, let's begin with uh, the first one that you brought up, which was the door trail uh, component. Uh, Pirate Park has always been intended to be a community green space. It was never intended to solely be a soccer complex. It was started as part of our stellar uh, community project in 2017. As a part of the community green space component, it was intended to be used for all events surrounding our community. The nursing home, uh, both the operator and the owner, have been extremely supportive of all of our projects, including uh, this last weekend where they partnered with us uh, to accommodate their parking, our events, and their vendors. There is a permanent uh, deeded right-of-way that they have uh, granted to the city of Greensburg to provide a public forever access across their property as it relates to the Next Level Trails grant, which was more than $400,000 provided to us by the Department of Natural Resources. That is a recorded deeded um, easement that will remain with that operation. Uh, they continue to be supportive um, of us. The DORA component is no different than any other type of event that would particularly be had at Rebecca Park. Um, there has been a beer garden at the uh, by the Tree City Fall or on the Tree City Brew as a part of the summer concert series for at least the last two or three years. Um, that's not an uncommon uh, type of occurrence. Your second item as it relates to the eclipse two years ago, Purdue University uh, was here in this very building, did a presentation to us that included the possibility of 15 to 30,000 people descending upon our community for this once in a lifetime event. Public Safety spent the last two years planning and preparing for that. I believe that they've done an amazing job making sure that that went off without a hitch. Our partners uh, from across the county, Visit Greensburg and us, uh, did work to host an event. There was a specific line item that was approved by the former city council, but this body is $20,000. We stayed inside that budget. That does not include the personnel. Uh, that was always the intention, is personnel would be absorbed by the departments as uh, needed. 
but if we did stay inside that, it is a specific line in our publicly available budget as it is every year. Um, you're more than welcome to find out how we spend all of our money um, through that. As you saw on the Board of Works, they approve almost all expenditures um, above and beyond anything that I'm authorized to do, but it is uh, ran through that and contracts are through them as well. The final item about signs, that was actually approved in the 2022, summer of 22 for the 23 budget. It was reapproved um, in the 23-24 budget. Signs were ordered in late 24 for installation, or I'm sorry, late 23 for installation in the spring of 24 as they were. Um, I agree with you, we have a lot to celebrate as a community. It's not just one team, it's a lot of individual athletes, it's a lot of um, FFA champions, it's a lot of robotics clubs, it's a lot of everything. And when this item was brought up, it was presented to the Board of Works, the designs were approved and purchased. Um, we have a lot of uh, individuals and teams to celebrate as well. Ms. Jackson is the second best shot put thrower in the nation, has won a national championship, and I don't think we even as, did as much as a, a poster for her. There's a gentleman, uh, Stan Mavis from the 1970s, who's a state champion as well. Uh, nothing for him. And I don't ever recall seeing an Angela Galk sign when I pulled into Decatur County that said state champion. The signs were given to the Greensburg schools um, for, the, for their use if they so choose. I'm a firm believer and a proud supporter of all of our athletes, our education, our academics, and everybody else. And I think this community can be too. And I don't think it's, a, I don't think it's any type of a reflection on that. Um, so I, I would encourage if the schools, I mean the schools have it in the floor, they've got a memorial for that as well. So those are some of my responses. I, I do think that our, over the last weekend, uh, this group, our group, uh, county and city, have been proactive, not reactive. I think that we should do that every day. I'll continue to defend it. I think they did a great job, and I think we should be very proud of them. Um, if I might. Sure. Mr. Tressler and I had the opportunity to work at the event and the people that we spoke with, both within the county and those from multiple states, were very, very complimentary of the city of Greensburg and the Greensburg Community Schools and having this partnership in presenting this event. Many of the adults complimented us on the cleanliness of the city, how nice it looked, and that it was probably a very nice environment to have a family and raise children, and that they would tell other people about the city of Greensburg, Indiana. That goodwill is worth thousands. And I got to thinking, what would it be like if one of those people had the opportunity, they had the money, that they thought that Greensburg is the place that they would like to build a factory. And what would that do for our city as far as providing occupations and income? Tax money. Sometimes we just look at the big picture rather than looking at all the individual pieces that may come from it. I am very proud of our city I'm extremely proud of the employees who gave up their weekend to help. I heard no complaints from anyone working. And it was amazing, and I mean amazing, to see the different departments work together, that they wanted this to work well. Having been a school administrator, one of my main concerns was making sure that we returned Greensburg 
high school and its area back to the clean environment it was before we started. And what was amazing is we didn't have to do much because the people who came to visit appreciated our community so much that they picked up their own messes. I drove out into Pirate Park and I picked up two Coke cans in one area. That was it. And we had thousands upon thousands and thousands of people who had an absolutely wonderful time enjoying each other's company. And we were blessed with great weather. I can't tell you how proud I am of this community and its employees. Thanks, Dr. King. Um, a couple other items from the Eclipse uh, conversation as well. Obviously, we've expressed thanks to our teams, and um, there was a lot of effort put in behind the scenes. We welcomed uh, just some folks that I uh, spoke to or, or know was in attendance. So we're from Ohio, Kentucky, South Carolina, both Virginias, New Jersey. We actually had an astronomer from New Jersey who joined us. She brought her telescope, took some photos. Uh, New York, Pennsylvania, Georgia, California, Washington, Nevada, Colorado, Iowa, Illinois, uh, North Carolina. We act, I learned today we actually had someone who got engaged at Pirate Park during the totality. Um, so we will forever be a spot in their life. And then we welcome folks from Scotland, England, Costa Rica, and the British Virgin Islands. So I think that's a great uh, showing of, of how far of an effect um, you know, good, good efforts can be and, and that those people are our representation hopefully carried around the world. The uh, astronomer from New Jersey uh, is now a friend of mine on Facebook. <laughs> <laughs> She's coming back to the Fall Festival. She seemed, yeah, she seemed very interested in it. She, so. she was a joy to talk to, and she shared her, that telescope had to have been $30,000. I, I don't know. I'm not an astronomer. I don't know how much a telescope cost, but that thing was huge. I used a 10-foot trailer to haul it back to her car for her. And uh, she was very, very appreciative of the entire community. Um, spoke highly of you, um, that you had welcomed her and made sure she was taken care of and spoke well of the, the entire community and uh, look forward to coming. She said she went to the Tennessee eclipse in 2017 and she thought maybe someday I'll retire. This lady was probably pushing 70. Maybe one day I'll retire and I'll go back to where I went. Was that in Tennessee? She said, I'm going to Greensburg. That's what she told me. She said, I'm, I'm going to, if I move, I'm moving to Greensburg. So we put an, an impression out there. Anything else on that topic? I think one of the things that I found uh, rewarding about the weekend was just the teamwork and the camaraderie of all the employees. Uh, I think you uh, can't put a dollar amount on that because uh, uh, everybody pitched in and helped each other. And uh, I, I found that to be uh, a very positive uh, item of the weekend. We've got a great team uh, that stepped up to help us out, um, filled in the filled it in, uh, came and worked on Sunday. Um, the public safety teams did a great job planning for the worst, hoping for the best. We were blessed with very good weather and um, overall it was a very uh, uneventful event, which is great. That's what we like. So, many thanks. Okay. Um, final couple updates, the heavy trash weeks, May 20th through the 24th, uh, please remember that. The inserts in the bills will go out, of course a lot of social media uh, coverage of that as well with what's available, what's not. Um, same kind of thing as last year, no major changes there. You also, um, the, the city council also has an appointment to the school board. Uh, we will need to make that appointment at the next meeting. That term for that individual is up in June. Um, you are more than welcome to send names to me and I can compile those and send them out um, before. I have uh, chatted with a couple individuals who um, have expressed some interest that I want to put their name on in, in the public, but I will uh, be sure they get added to the list. Um, if you have something maybe the next week or two, if you could send that over, that way we can get it put back together. Um, send it out if you need anything related to that. I don't know who's going off. Yes? Is there requirements for that as far as uh, a party affiliation or anything? I think the answer to that is yes, but Vicki didn't tell me that in her email. I will find out and let you know. I think there is an affiliation requirement. 
I, I think there is, but I, okay. I will I will investigate that and get you an answer. I do know they have to live. Oh, I don't even know that. I assume they have to live in the district. Right. Um, I think so. Yes. Which is Washington Township for reference. Okay. Any? Okay. Perfect. Um, Jamie, you want to give an update from the board works? Yep. Uh, we were blessed with the presence of the Mark Garman uh, for the Tree City Fall Festival street closures, which we approved. <laughs> the, yeah. uh, Deanna Hamer came and we approved basically the, uh, it's not really street closures, but assistance with their Tree City rolling tour, uh, but it won't really create any street closures, just maybe some assistance with stopping traffic short term. Uh, the Mayor's Youth Council came and we approved some road closures out by the high school around uh, on June 15th for a uh, color run. That'll be exciting. Um, they had some cool pictures there. You can get doused with all kinds of chalk. Daryl, I'm thinking of you. Yeah, you would just be great. We nominated Glenn Tebby to be the Grand Marshal uh, for the Board of Works, so the City Council has to say someone as well. I just, I just want to be a I'm thinking, I'm thinking of you. Uh, uh, Chief McNeely came. Uh, we approved a landscaping bid for uh, Duty, uh, off duty landscaping, or uh, for the fire, or for the police station, and then we also uh, approved the disposition of four police cars as a trade-in value for another police car that we're purchasing. Uh, the fire chief came, and we granted Josh the authorization to consider conditional offer of employment for a new uh, new firefighter after a meeting that's going to be held with the fire chief and the assistant chiefs tomorrow night. Uh, then uh, Zach came, we basically, uh, we approved the, uh, the increase in the fee for the street and alley vacation permit fee to $200. It wasn't 100, however, our fees were exceeding that on a pretty regular basis. So this kind of came out to, there were some that were over 200, some that were under, it's kind of a, a nice round balance. So we. That way we're not losing money on that. We're definitely not making money on that. That doesn't include any time or hours involved. It was just our straight up costs. Uh, and then the Washington, or we basically approved a Washington Street Engineering Amendment for HWC uh, dealing with drainage and CCMG grant money. Uh, Zeke came, we approved the purchase of a truck from Fleetwood uh, Automotive, or Fleetwood Chevrolet and then we also approved a quote uh, for Serpentix uh, for a, a new belt. And then Donna came, we approved a, a sewer leak adjustment. And that, that's pretty much it. Okay. Any questions for Jamie? Mark, what you got from Main Street? Uh, first of all, the only reason you got the Mark Carmen is because the Robin Meyer is president of the Fall Festival this year, and he's a Board of Works member. So, uh, Main Street Greensburg updates. Um, Allie Beck was officially hired as our executive director. Um, there are applications out there that have been accepted, and a new assistant will soon be picked for her. Um, we wanted her on board first so she could add into the selection of the assistant. Uh, new added board members include Taylor Hawk, Kristen Schlemmer, and Michelle Miller. <clears throat> Caleb Robertson was elected as president. Philip Dywert is the vice president. Judy Raymer is the secretary. And Rose Cronley is the new treasurer. And that's pretty much it. Okay. Having anything else in plan? Nope, the only two items we had were the ones we just discussed here this evening. Perfect. Carol, economic development. They have not met since the last meeting. The, the meet, next meeting is uh, Thursday morning. 911 are planned. No meeting was held. Solid waste. Did you go to that one? I did. Um, what did we talk about? Uh, the discussion about how do we do bagged uh, versus unbagged leaves within the city for Kurt, uh, brush for um, the city services was discussed, there was some discussion about the, the lysing contract, about how they get deposited out there, what we pay and how, or what solid waste pays, and how uh, it was decided to continue on with the way we are based on equipment and manpower um, requirements. And then it was mostly just events and business oriented type items, nothing uh, new, really. Okay. Uh, redevelopment, Daryl. Um, the, uh contract with Lee and Associates uh, 
was not uh, renewed. We did sign a contract with uh, Furman Realty. They have a good resume for bringing businesses to communities similar to ours, so we're pretty excited about that. Um, the update on the Liberty Lakes project, which is the uh, housing project that's going on by Veterans Way. Um, on May the 8th, we'll be going to the uh, plant. Uh, the first plant will go to the Planning Commission. Once that's approved, then the Commission gave Dr. Weigel, Weigel approval to execute the deed. Um, and then for the apartment complex on the old jail property, uh, there were 36 RFPs sent out. Uh, four have been received or are anticipated to come back. So, um, and then there was a commission that was appointed uh, for this project, and that includes uh, our project manager for the city, Zach, the mayor, and uh, Darren uh, Burkhardt, and myself. That's all I have. Um, Chamber of Commerce meets tomorrow. EMA meets uh, <coughs> Thursday. Water board had to cancel due to the impending weather, uh, which then was sunny skies, but that happens. Um, Aviation Board really didn't have anything um, extraordinary. They are working on a couple of their projects and have a proposal that they'll probably be um, working towards bringing uh, to you all maybe yet later this year about what's next for them. There hasn't been an insurance committee meeting. I think that concludes all of the committee reports. Anything else? If not, take a motion to adjourn. So moved. Motion's been made by Daryl. All those in favor, signify by the night. Aye. Aye. Those opposed. Thanks, everyone.